हरे नाम संकीर्तन की जय 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 श्री राधे श्याम हरि बोल सो वंडरफुल टू बी हियर विद ऑल द वैष्णवस वैष्णवीस इन योर होम रत्नपुर माता जी हरि बोल वेरी नाइस टू सी यू अगेन टुडे वी आर ऑब्जर्विंग दिस वेरी ऑस्पिशियस ओकेजन लाइक रामनाथ गुरु स्पोक अबाउट कार्षी तिथि स्टार्ट ऑफ बीजमा पंचक एंड द special festival day of tirupav and stiti of shri gokshas babaji maharaj and shri bhakti dayat madhav goswami maharaj tirupav avir bhav avir bhav avir bhav shri bhakti dayat madhav goswami maharaj we heard about his volcanic energy avir bhav thik thik no problem so avir bhav jai avir bhav so <coughs> I was just thinking as you we were speaking about our acharyas how they are engaged so much in service and why are they endeavoring so strenuously what is the cause of their strenuous effort what is the motivation there's activity and there's mood and we have to understand that every activity has a mood behind it and so in spiritual life we're concerned with developing the proper mood that goes along with the effort Sometimes the danger in spiritual life is like you mentioned this story Gokshalas Babaji Maharaj of someone wanting to come and do an activity that was for the sake of prachar preaching and which is a worthy activity a honorable noble activity but Gokshalas Babaji Maharaj encouraged him first to develop the subsequent mood that would support that activity and make it fruitful spiritually fruitful he said that right he wanted to do a dharma shabha a religious assembly to support bhajan spiritual development and babaji mara said first do bhajan yourself then you can give it to others by physician heal thyself if you don't know how to swim how are you going to save someone from drowning so we must develop the internal mood and focus and then the strenuous effort that goes along with it will be properly aligned it's like the car is out of alignment When the mood's not right, the activity is there. The alignment's off, and then what's going to happen? You don't know. If it's too bad, then the car's you're going to crash. And so we need to develop the proper mood. And so Gorkhshas Babaji Maharaj was very serious about establishing that mood. And so on this day, we can have a little discussion about the mood and the effort, the volcanic energy seen by Shri Bhakti Dayat Madhav Goswami Maharaj. He had that internal mood. and Gokshalas Babaji Maharaj encouraged the development of that internal mood. We see Shri Swami Prabhupada that mood was so powerful that the activity itself was so grand. Otherwise without that volcanic energy that volcanic energy comes from the correct mood. Otherwise for pratishtha for prestige our efforts will be limited at a certain point some opposition will come or some contrary result and we desire will come and we'll give up. But if the proper mood is there then our energy can be truly volcanic in service sarva sadhana mukhya hi guru seva the greatest type of service is guru seva is described in our shastra but how can we do real guru seva it's described by our, our guru dev that during the time during the time of guru maharaj presence so many will be serving but after his presence how will they behave that will show the true nature of the disciple after the apparent you could say disappearance of the guru then how do we act that shows our character so we want to have a lifelong pursuit of spiritual development and the core internal drive must be there we are in the pursuit of spiritual perfection to achieve that highest spiritual wealth why because this is the instruction of our guru pad padma so by serving him by pleasing him we can please him by achieving that spiritual wealth so i wanted i was thinking a little bit about gorkhas babaji maharaj and the difference between material and spiritual endeavor and material greed and spiritual greed in this world it's natural for people to be materially greedy <laughs> because first of all there's the basic necessities of life that require hard earned wealth so we have to work hard and we think if i could work less and make more and we start being greedy 
I'll do this, I'll do that, I'll do this and that. To a certain amount, we have to maintain ourselves, maintain family, society. This is our responsibility. But we should also not give up spiritual, spiritual greed. <laughs> Love. When Shri Prabhupada established this International Society for Krishna Consciousness, in, in, he, trans, he transmitted the mood of Shri Rupa Goswami's verse, Krishna Bhakti Ras Bhavi Pramati, means complete, spontaneous absorption in Krishna, Krishna Consciousness. And therefore, in his Hindi books, it's called the Krishna Bhavanam Rita Sangha. When you're in Vrindavan, in all the books, Krishna Bhavanam Rita Sangha, Sangapva Acharya. Founder Acharya for the Krishna Bhavana Murita Sangha. The association of devotees are fully absorbed in Sri Krishna, Krishna consciousness. So how to be Krishna conscious? This is our great, you know, question. Kriyatam Jadikuto Bilobya not by only Sukriti, pious merits, by low, by spiritual greed. Tatra Lodyam Mudyam Ekalam. Spiritual greed is the only currency, mulya or value asset that you can exchange for Krishna consciousness. Greed, spiritual greed. So there, these two things, there's material greed, spiritual greed. And if the mood is right, then they don't have to be completely opposing. And I stress the word completely. <laughs> because people may say, oh, why work so hard establishing temples, preaching, printing books? Why engage our volcanic energy in an activity related to this world? Is that spiritual greed? So this Swami Prabhupada said, Yasyahamanugrahami When someone goes towards Krishna, he takes everything from them. Harisetadhanam. Hari, he who steals. He steals away everything from them. When they're engaged in this world, he takes away things of this world and then he gives things of spirit. He completely replenishes. Why? Krishna also says in the Gita. What does he say? On one hand, he says, I steal everything away. Hari Setadhanam. Hari, stealing. On the other side, he says, I protect everything and I give you whatever you need. So one side is with material greed and attachment to this world, and therefore we must cut it off like a surgeon. Krishna is Bhavarog Nasite Chatur. We sing this song Bhakti Thakur, Sunahera Sikajan. Bhavarog Nasite Chatur. Krishna is the most expert physician. Bhavarog for samsara, material life. So he knows what medicine to use. Sometimes he has to use a scalpel. Sometimes he has to use proper nourishing diet. Some of it's taking away. Something has to be taken away. But if the mood is correct and the internal drive is there with relationship to Guru Vaishnavas, then that faith can move mountains and build great monuments. Why do we say faith can move mountains? Why? The power of that faith can be like a fire igniting so many people in service to this grand transcendental cause. This is the power of faith. And that can build great monuments, like our great temples, our books that we distribute, our societies. But the mood must be so pure and powerful. Which the Prabhupada said, purity is the force. Purity of mood, sincerity and endeavor. And so they don't have to, they're not opposing things. Bhakti Siddhanta Prabhupada took initiation from Srila Gorkshadas Babaji Maharaj, correct? He took initiation, but it was very difficult. Gorkshadas Babaji Maharaj had no disciples, he didn't want to make disciples. But Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati was fasting. He did a Chandrayan Vrat, which means every day you eat one first, time. no, one time a day, but the, you eat 14 mouthfuls. Full moon, and then every day as the full moon decreases, one mouthful less. Last day only one mouthful, and then you increase again. And he was getting so skinny, Bhaktivedanta Thakur said, "You're going to kill my son." 
to Gorkhsa's Babaji Maharaj. And Gorkhsa's Babaji Maharaj was Shiksha disciple of Bhaktivinoda. <laughs> Bhaktivinoda Thakur said, why aren't you giving him initiation? But he stressed this idea that we have to have, this is a story for us as a lesson. They are all eternal associates of Krishna. He said it's not a cheap thing. And what is Bhaktivinoda Thakur saying? Jada Vidya Jata Mayara Vaibhav Jivana Vanaika Gada. Material education, material wealth, beauty, fame, these are all hindrances in our spiritual development. As long as we are materially attached, then Harisheta Dhanam, Krishna should steal it away. Dvam Akinchana Gocharam, Krishna is approached by those who are Akinchan, who have nothing, who are destitute. Only, their only possession is Krishna, Krishna Nam, faith in Guru, relationship, this is their possession. So Bhakti Siddhanta Prabhupada, he received this initiation from Gorkhsadas Babaji Maharaj. Gorkhsadas Babaji Maharaj was the embodiment of this pure spiritual endeavor. Pure spiritual endeavor. And for that pursuit of spiritual life, we should not waste a moment. And then whatever our Guru Maharaj instructs us, that is our pure spiritual endeavor, like we heard. Like Dait Mara Goswami Maharaj. For him, the end of other people's service was the beginning of his service. And he never thought, this is our Param Guru Dev Bhakti Priyam Kesha Maharaj writes. He said, book publication is non different from Kirtan and Japa. And he said, in Gaur Purnima time, during Navadri Prikma, there were 20,000 pilgrims. He would take everyone's Japa bag. He said, now, this five days, I will chant for you. I'll mm. give you the benefit of all the rounds, but you must serve. I saw Vaishnavas there, our Prabhuji, he would, I would wake up at like, because we were in an outside room, and there was, we were in like an old school house full of mosquitoes nearby Keshaji Gaudiya Mat. it was an old house. But we would be in the kitchen from like 5.30 a.m. to 10 p.m. Because you're cooking for 20,000 people, and all the hundred cooks, they need medicine, they need to be taken care of, all the pilgrims when they come back in the evening giving them medicine. We would have us brahmacharis 20.30, and we'd be cutting, we'd have a room full of pump, Maybe you were in Navadvipa or you saw. We'd have a mountain of pumpkin, mountain of cabbage, mountain of potatoes, and you'd sit there all day and it would just stack up like a mountain. But when did we have time for japa? Prabhupada would get up at one in the morning and chant 64 rounds. Sometimes we'd wake up because you'd hear the door open. And from 1 a.m. to like 5, pacing outside in the courtyard of Navadvipa, chanting Harinam, then going bathing in the Ganga, doing Ganga Stuti Arti, prayers coming back, going to the kitchen. So service was not sacrificed and sadhana was not sacrificed. Imagine that power, that spiritual power that comes from this mamata, from relationship, from responsibility. Responsibility isn't a, something that makes you weak. Taking, response make, taking responsibility makes you spiritually strong. You know, this was, we are trying in our humble, small way to serve this mood. Therefore, we, you know, people were saying, before we left India, oh, go to Hawaii, you know, you can live, you know, you can get like a quarter of an acre and relax, do bhajan, no worries. No problem, we can, you know, why in cold upstate New York? Because this will teach us to be strong. For Guru Seva, we should take all responsibility, we should be fearless, charge forward into battle. From that center, more and more brahmacharis, more and more devotees, more and more devotees, then we can start center Hawaii, here, there, everywhere. But we cannot be lazy and soft. It's not Guru Seva. We should be strong and determined. What is a little snow? Never killed anyone who was, you know, <laughs> able, young bodied, and able. We should not be lazy. So this is our mood spiritual greed, spiritual desire, tatra loliam. That spiritual greed is our currency. Material greed is dangerous. Gorkhsalas Babaji Maharaj taught this. If we want to progress in spiritual life, give up material greed. It doesn't mean we don't strive for the service of Guru. It means make the mood right in the heart and do bhajan and develop relationship. Go forward like that. With a strong relationship to Guru Vaishnavas, Vridha Kori Dharo Pai. Hold on tightly to the feet of Nityananda. That is Guru Vaishnav. That's like your spiritual roots. If your roots are deep and strong, no matter what the storm comes, you will stay strong. You won't be shaken. So 
and through that there's roots. There's a story about material greed. If we try to develop material greed, we'll never come to the limit of our desire. Bhagavatam says, no amount of land, wealth, beautiful women, anything can satisfy the fire of one's lusty desire. Nothing. You can be king of the world, but want to be king of the universe. Hiranyakashipu, not Hiranyakashipu, yes, Hiranyakashipu or any great demon. You'll never be satisfied. Ravan, Kumbhakarni. But, so there's a story, interesting story. There was a man, a very poor man. So one time, a very wealthy person came and told him, Tomorrow morning, whatever distance you can travel by foot, that much land I'll give you in charity. Okay? You can imagine. If you could do that in New York. <laughs> <laughs> Manhattan. No need to open up from so far. <laughs> However far you can travel by foot, that much land I'll give you in charity. So, so what did he do? Early morning, like ready for a marathon. Early morning before crack of dawn, went out like roadrunner. <laughs> Lunchtime, still going. Now he's slowing down a little bit, walking. He's trying to go very, very far, right? Oh. And then it's like three, four, he starts turning the corner, and then he'll start coming back. But he's already exhausted so much energy, <laughs> it's getting a little harder to come back. Keeps coming, keeps coming. He said, anything you get to by that evening, you can have. But you have to complete the circuit. This is the condition. Okay? Imagine, okay? Whatever distance you can go, you have to complete the circuit. So by evening time, he was coming. He was so exhausted because he gave so much energy to it. Full of material greed. As he was just finishing the distance, just getting home. Completely exhausted himself, fell down. Just crawling towards the finish line, a few steps away, he died. Couldn't complete, he was too greedy. He went too far. Mm. Another person, his servant came, completed the steps, he received everything. <laughs> <laughs> Material greed, very dangerous. You cannot finish it, you cannot be sat you cannot get complete satisfaction, you will not fulfill your desires. Therefore, develop spiritual greed. So Nathan Goswami, there's a story. A Brahmin came, he wanted dowry for his daughter. And so he went to go Mahadev. Mahadev said, go to Sanatana Goswami. They were close friends. Chakrishwar Mahadev, Sanatana Goswami, they stayed together. So the Brahmin went to Sanatana Goswami. And he said, I'm looking for dowry for my daughter's wedding. He said, I don't, I'm a Babaji, I don't have any possessions. What do I have? Mahadev said, he has the most wealth. Go to him. Mm. So Sanatana Goswami said, I don't have anything. So then he was about to leave disappointed. But he said, Mahadev cannot tell a lie. So then Sanatana Goswami said, oh yes, a few days ago I found a touchstone, but I didn't need it, so I threw it out. Maybe it's around here somewhere. So the Brahmin was very excited, started looking around, found the touchstone. Ecstatic, jumping for joy, started to leave. It was like in the ref refuge area, refuse, trash. You can imagine. You have like the hero, uh, with like the most expensive hira. Yes. <laughs> So he threw it out. So this person jumping in ecstasy like a madman who just won the lottery, started running away. But as he got a little away, he started getting a little afraid. Someone will find out, someone will attack me for it, someone may kill me. And why did he throw it in the garbage? And so he wasn't ready to give it up. He was just, let me ask him a question first and then go. So he came back to Sanatana Goswami and asked him, why did you throw it away? And someone may kill me for this. How will I protect it and hide it? Sanatana Goswami said, this is not so valuable. When we die, are we going to take it with us? And are we going to remember anything we did in this life? It's all going to be gone in the sand of time. Dust, ash, gone. Stool and gold, the same. <laughs> Broken glasses. This is Bhagavatam. Dirt, stool and gold, the same. We're all going to die. Whatever is our allotted amount in life will come, and therefore we should work hard. 
No problem. We shouldn't be lazy. Everything is God's property. Whatever is meant to come to us will come. We should work. No problem. But don't be overly greedy. Because then that can lead to a downfall, material greed. And it will curtail your development of spiritual greed. If you're only materially greedy, how are you going to be spiritually greedy? What is material greed? Four kinds of material wealth. Dharma, Artha, Kama, Moksha. These are four Purush Arthas. Types of material uh, prosperity, this idea. But that's not the real Artha. Chaitanya Charitamrita says, Agyan Tamira Nam Kahiya Kaitava Dharma, Artha, Kama, Moksha, Vancha, Adisha. What is a gyan? Ignorance and tama, darkness. It's cheating. And it's so-called religiosity for pursuit of economic development, for sense gratification, even for liberation. This is only tama, darkness. What is the real brightness? Ujval, Panchan Purushartha, Krishna, Prem, pure love for Krishna, relationship. That spiritual wealth, Sanatana Goswami told him, that wealth is useless. What are you going to get with that? People are just going to attack you, fight you over it. You're not going to be happy. Sri Ram Goswami Maharaj would say, a person who has a sadhu, a baba, sleeping under a tree with no possessions is more happy than someone who's like a king in a palace who's always worried my family members may fight me for it, my cousin, my relative, this person, that person, someone may steal it. Is it safe? Always in anxiety. So a sadhu with no possessions, more happy. So the point is, for our own sake, we should be in this kinshan a kinshan. But then, why work so hard for Guru? Our, I posted this the other day. On Vyas Puja in Keshuji Godima 2008, I was there. Gurudev said in Hindi, we should work 1,000 times harder than the average person does to maintain their own household for the sake of service to Guru. We should Sanyasi's put, Brahmacharya. Sanyasi's Brahmacharya specifically, he said. We should work a thousand times hard. And I'm very ashamed, very shy, because I see people working so hard. They have to work so hard. This is New York. We don't have a choice. But our mood is we don't want to, oh, let others work hard and take the fruits of their labor. No, we should work tirelessly. Our work doesn't necessarily have a monetary value. You know, serving Takaji, cooking, cleaning, maintaining the ashram, developing it, preaching. We don't get necessarily money for it. That's not her mood. But that doesn't mean we should not work hard. Work hard, publishing books, transcribing, preaching, like Bhakti Dai Mata Goswami is tirelessly engaged in service. Tirelessly engaged in service. That doesn't that means service is Harinam, service is Kirtan, service is program. In temple life, when I was living in India, at least eight hours of seva and then four or five hours of programs every day. Fifteen years. At least cooking two, three times, translating, transcribing, preaching, traveling here and there, doing bhiksha. And then programs is from Mangalarati to evening, two, three classes, kirtan, harigata. Where's the time? Don't waste a moment. Shanti ravyartha kalatvam. You should be restless. Shanti Maharaj speaks like that, right? Be restless. Don't waste a moment. Shanti ravyartha kalatvam. This means you're advancing. Restlessness. You don't want to waste a moment. So we pray to Gorksha as Babiji Maharaj. So we'll tell a few short stories of his and then conclude. He had this spiritual greed, lobe. And the more you refine, define, refine, and then pursue, define your spiritual goals, refine your intention, and then proceed on the path. Srila Swami Prabhupada, I was hearing a lecture about him. Our Gurudev was saying, since the moment he took sannyas, he never wasted a second. What does it mean not to waste a second? Because there's many things. People can be very busy. We speak in the ashram. We're talking with the devotees. It's very easy to be busy. But what for? What are the results of your busyness? Focus. Be efficient. And find what are your real goals. Define your real goals. Don't just be busy for everything and for nothing. Focus. Shwami Prabhupada, after sannyas, never wasted a moment either translating, transcribing, writing, preaching, chanting, kirtan program, without a single moment lost. He would print the Back to Godhead, distribute himself in Delhi and at other places, tirelessly engaged. So Gorkhsa's Babaji Maharaj, we see in his life, <clears throat> his greed. Meaning, he is pure associate of Krishna, but he showed us exemplifying that mood of one-pointed dedication. 
We were singing this song, Kotai Gopranamon. Wherever he was, only Radhe Radhe. Deko diya prana rakho Radhe Radhe. Tomar kangal tomai dake Radhe Radhe. This beggar, this, this wretched person is begging for you. When will you give me your darshan, give me your mercy? Ek bar dake, keshi gada, bhamsi vata, talma, talvan, tamalvan, govardhan, kusumvan, radhakun, shamkun. Everywhere, only Radhe Radhe. Please give me your mercy. This is spiritual greed. What is our spiritual greed? If you don't give me a mercy, I'll give up this life. Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur had that spiritual greed. Therefore, he was ready to give up his life at Radhakund. Radharani directly appeared and revealed herself to him. There's a story about this Rudra talks about. This is spiritual greed, focus, dedication. So Bhavati Maharaj, he was always absorbed like that. He gave up all attraction towards material things. Therefore, he lived in a latrine for many months. A municipal latrine, not his own latrine. Like in Navadip, certain areas. A municipal latrine in, in India. <laughs> not so nice smelling, not so clean. It's like here, if we go to the New York City parks and you go to the latrine. It's not very, I've been in Thompson Square latrine many times. <laughs> it's not so clean. You can imagine, he lived in there, and the people, the dignitary came and they said, I'll build you a beautiful house, stay there. He said, no. He said, the stench of materialistic people, eager for material wealth, is much less tolerable than the stench of this latrine. And if I'm here in this latrine, those types of materialistic people will not come to me. So I'm safe. <laughs> One time, a lady in the ashram, a lady was telling him he was, he had some rice and things up on a, like a sat, sachet or like a bundle hanging from a rafter. And an old lady told him, oh, Baba, there was a snake. He was getting blind at that time, very old. There was a snake and it went in the food and it poison might have been there. So you shouldn't take it. And he told her, don't tell me anything. <laughs> don't give me any instruction. Attachment a sadhu to this kind of thing, he knows where it leads. Now, he'll, he said it's better to be killed by that poison. That poison will only destroy one life. Poison of your affection will destroy many lifetimes. <laughs> very strong. It's very strong. Of course, that's Bhavani Maharaj. One time, he had showed up to Bhakti Mataka where they saw him. And he was dressed as a gentleman, like a British... Raj, gentlemen, with a cane, with a suit, like the, you know, very nice suit. And Bhakti Tucker said, Babaji Maharaj, what is this? <laughs> Normally you're dressed in Copen. You're dressed in a nice suit, like a polished gentleman. He said, nowadays I see so many so-called Babas, so many so-called Sadhus. They're giving such a stain to the reputation of Sadhus. Better to show up as a proper gentleman. I don't want to be amongst those who are deceitful hypocrites, pretending to be sadhus and fostering so many bad activities. We see <laughs> sadhus and, you know, not to criticize, some sadhus, they are more wealthy than the most wealthy people. <laughs> Dressed like, oh, Baba. <laughs> but is it material greed or spiritual greed? For Guru, for Krishna, Swami Prabhupada, how many temples, how much wealth? You cannot touch, you cannot estimate its value, but not even a... Benny is for his own enjoyment. Bhakti Siddhanta Prabhupada said about his Guru Maharaj, he said, if I'm a very critical person, Bhakti Siddhanta writes this, Prabhupada, I'm a very critical person, and I stayed with my Guru Maharaj for a long time. He said, if I were to see that he was following Krishna consciousness 99.9%, 99%, I could not accept him as my Guru. I only accepted him because I saw 100, 100, 100% so following pure Krishna consciousness. Therefore, I accepted him. He said, this is, he said, this is my bad quality. I'm very critical. So, Gork says, but our gurus, they can establish huge societies, hundreds and hundreds of temples. They have that capacity, that pure mood. Otherwise, material greed is very dangerous. Nadanam najanam nasundirim kavitam va jagadish kami mama janmani janmani shura bhavatam bhakti rahaitu ki tvai. First verse, she's asked to come forth. Abhra says, no need wealth, nadan, najan, no need followers, kavita, no need great expertise in speaking, poetry, 
writing this and that only was my only desire. Life after life, Bhavatad Bhakti Rahaitaki. Give me causeless devotion, unconditional love, selfless love for your lotus feet, like the gopis. Gurudev describes in Parakya Ras, Krishna never gave the why is Parakya Ras so high? Swakya Ras, married life with Krishna and his consorts, Dwarka. Krishna gives them house, Krishna gives them children, gives them, Krishna gives all facility. <clears throat> in Braj, we never hear Krishna gave any gift to the gopis. They don't need, they give to him. Mm. He's completely the unconditional. Krishna steals from them. What to speak of giving to them, he steals from them. <laughs> Every day. Wakes up in the morning and goes steals from them. That's why we say, sadhu, when we take initiation from Guru, actually anyone, we take initiation from Guru, we say we're in a Chutta Gotra. Krishna's lineage. Why means we're beggars. Krishna's also a beggar. He doesn't have anything. Without Lakshmi, there's a story when, I'll finish with this, but it's a funny story. When <clears throat> Brigu, you know the story of Brigu? When he, Brigu was told by, uh, I think it was Brahma or one of the, uh, no, not Brahma. He wanted to, the devas, demigods were deciding who is the chief supreme god. Brahma, Mahadeva, Vishnu. Narad told. told that. Yes. So Narad said like this. Narad's always causing mischief. <laughs> right? So he said, go and do a test, examination. Who's the topmost? So he went to Brahma and started to abuse him. Brigu. Brigu went. And then Brahma was very upset. You know, I'm an important person. Why are you speaking to me like this? Send him away. He went to Lord Shiva and was criticizing and abusing him. Lord Shiva picked up his trident and went to run and attack him. <laughs> he ran away. Went to Lord Vishnu. Lord Vishnu was resting, Lakshmi Devi, fanning. He don't do that. And he kicked him on his chest with his foot. And Vishnu opened his eyes and said, Oh, you have come. I did not properly welcome you. I'm sorry, my chest is so hard. Your foot is so soft. Perhaps it pained your foot. And then he said, Oh, please let us wash his feet and massage his feet and give him some prasad. Jai Shri Krishna. <laughs> Hello, Jai Shri Krishna. Jai Shri Krishna. But what is the point? When that, he said, I'll keep this footprint on my chest. So Lakshmi Devi became upset. Your chest is my place. Lakshmi Rekha, a gold line is on Krishna's chest or Vishnu's chest. Every Vishnu. So you're giving, it's like a co-wife. Hear me and hear Brigu. <laughs> <laughs> and his feet. Her mood is, you are Bhagavan. How can someone's feet be on your chest? And this person. So she cursed Brahmins, actually, the whole caste. So they'll always be poor. <laughs> and she left. She, she went, uh, she would say, sometimes wife says, husband has to sleep outside on the couch. But she said, I will not stay with you now. So she went away for some time. And Narayan had to beg from Kuvera. And there's a whole past on how he comes to this world and becomes, there's a whole past time. But the point is, without Shakti, Krishna, <laughs> he's a beggar. So we are in his line. We're also, without him, we have nothing. But Krishna is so sweet. In Parakya Ras, it's unconditional love. That's the point. Tvama Kinshana Gocharam. Krishna is achieved by those who are completely filled with unconditional love. Then, everything that manifests is his property. Sanatana Goswami, when he built this Madan Mohan temple, he didn't have any possessive mood towards it. He, he was, what hard, He Radhe Braj Devi Ke Chananda Sunokata. Here and there, different tree out of every night in Vrindavan, crying out, He Radhe, He Braj Devi Ke. Last story, Gokshadas Babaji Maharaj. In Vrindavan, he was staying, and the Mahantas were trying to feed him, offering him foodstuffs from the deities. He wouldn't accept. He went and he begged from a sweeper. He said, give me your, what the sweeper's class does. They sweep all the pathways and then in the evening they go to Bhiksha and people give them some food and they maintain their life. So Babaji Maharaj said, give me some of this and I'll eat that. Your remnants. And the sweeper was very afraid. He didn't want to give. So he again and again requested and finally he gave. And everyone was very disturbed hearing this. All night. Gorksha Babaji Maharaj was Mahant of all of the Dhams. He was the most senior Vaishnava, most respected. And he was taken from the sweeper class and not taken from the Mahantas of the big temples. 
Instead, they have they are in Braj, but not taking shelter of the dust of Braj. Sweepers are all day sweeping, the, and the whole body is covered in the dust of Braj. They're always serving the dust of Braj. And the Mahans sometimes, you know, big, big, it said <laughs> in the big palace, you know, like Takaji's room, nice bed, no dust in your room. <laughs> if any dust comes, you get five sevaks to get the dust out. Go away, go away, go away. We don't want Braj dust. It's dangerous. Ramchandra, last story, I promise. Ramchandra, one time a dog came to his court. Ramchandra, the Ram Rajya, kingdom of Ram. A dog came to his court and with a complaint. The dog said, I was sleeping on the road, in the middle of the road, and a Brahmin was coming by, and it was a wide road, but he didn't want to go on the other side, and he hit me with a stick and broke my leg. And now, because I'm not able to walk properly, I'm not able to go find food or do anything. Other dogs attack me. I'm crippled. What am I going to do? What is the punishment? Ram called by Shista, Vishwamitra, his sages, gurus, said, I cannot punish Brahmin. Kshatriya cannot punish Brahmin. Other Brahmins can give some reconciliation. So then the Brahmin came and Vishwamitra, Vishista said, okay, let the dog decide the punishment. The dog said, you should make him the Mahanta, temple president. Mm of this Kalikut Mandir, the biggest temple in India, most wealthy, like Tirupati, wealthiest temple, make him the Mahan. The Brahmins start to dance. <laughs> Look at this foolish dog. <laughs> foolish, foolish dog. Then Ram asked, why did you give this punishment? He said, last life I was that Mahan. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever came to the temple, I wanted to enjoy. I enjoyed everything. Now I've become a dog. So if he's the Mahanta, whatever nice goes to Takachi, my tongue was always out, he said. And I was Mahanta, my tongue was always out, dripping saliva. Oh, Takachi is getting today, that's Malai. Pujari, bring to my room. Takachi is getting Manbog, Shrikan, bring to my room. I'll eat. Very dangerous. Mahanta and Sevak and Pujari. Easiest to rise, easiest to fall. Mahanta, Pujari, and Guru Sevak. Easiest to rise, easiest to fall. So be very careful. Sadhus have done. So Gokshas Babaji Maharaj in his life, always full of this ekant nishta, one point of devotion, completely focused. He had, once at midnight he came to Bhaktivinoda Thakur's house in Godrum, and it was a storm outside, and he was blind. And Bhaktivinoda Thakur said, "How did you come?" Bhaktivinoda Thakur was cooking a feast for Radha Madhav. Bhaktivinoda Thakur, at night time, he would cook feast and serve puri, halal, everything. Babaji Maharaj said, I knew you were doing a feast. Krishna invited me. Everyone said, a, a young a boy grabbed my hand and brought me here. So Bhaktivinoda Thakur understood. Krishna himself brought Babaji Maharaj there. And he said, now Ras Lila is going on. Now I'm cooking this and serving Takaji, Radha Madhav. And now I'm giving to their associates. So this is the mood of our Guru Varga. They have that one-pointed love and devotion and that spiritual love. Therefore, Param Guru Dev, he was always focused, always engaged, Bhakti Dayat Maharaj, always active. But his mood, his heart, was full of that one-pointed love and devotion. That's why when he was building his temple steps, and someone asked him about the colors of his temple steps, he broke down. Astasatvik Bhav, symptoms of ecstasy manifested. Just asking about the colors of the steps of his temple. One was blue, one was gold, one was like pinkish, like Rani. Right? Mm -hmm. And he began to weep in ecstasy, see his mood. And he described that one step is for Krishna, one step is Radha's color, and one step is my own spiritual form, the color that I wear. So tirelessly he was engaged in working and management, maintaining 64 temples. But where was his mood? So this is our idea. We have the right mood, we maintain and cultivate and develop that mood, then we can practice what we preach.